In this video, I'm going to be going over resting membrane potential and how it's generated. I've drawn on the board for you a diagram of a membrane. Uh, it's a simplified diagram, but it, it, it'll do to help us understand the concept here. Um, in this diagram, we have our sodium potassium pump and we have our various ion channels uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. I've also identified for you the concentration gradients of the ions that we're going to be talking about. As you can see, I've drawn this ion, um, this membrane kind of um, superimposed with this uh, this circuit, right? Uh, that has our capacitor, which represents the membrane, and um, the pumps, resistors, and I'm going to draw our um, our batteries here in a second. So the batteries in this case are represented, they are actually created by these concentration gradients. So as you can see with sodium, we have 145 millimolars of sodium outside the cell and 15 millimolars in. So what does that mean? That means that when we draw our battery here, our positive charges are going to be wanting to go into the cell. Our negative charges are going to be going out of the cell in that case, okay? Potassium, we have 120 millimolars inside and 4.5 millimolars outside. So this is actually going to be the opposite, right? The positive charges are going to want to move outside of the cell. Okay. Um, and our negative charges will stay inside the cell. Calcium uh, has one millimolar outside the cell and 10 to the negative fourth millimolars inside the cell. So that's going to be moving like, uh, like the sodium, positive channels, positive ions are going to want to go into the cell here. And then we have our chloride. Um, chloride has 116 millimolars outside the cell and 20 millimolars inside the cell. Um, and so this is actually going to want to go into the cell, uh, like sodium and like calcium. But because it's negatively charged, we represent a negative charge going into the cell, positive charge being outside the cell. Okay? So, what happens? Uh, okay, so we can have uh, really strong resistors and weaker resistors, right? So, if you have a weaker resistor, more charge is going to be getting through. If you have a stronger resistor, or in other words, if the channel is more likely to be closed, then you're going to get less of the ions moving across the membrane. So, um, in physiologically, what's most common is the you're going to have leaky potassium channels. Uh, so, that means that most of the charge that's generated is going to be due to this channel right here. Um, if we were to theoretically have a, a cell that was most leaky to sodium, then most of the charge would actually be caused by the passage of those positive ions through, but that's typically not the case. So let's think about it. If we have mostly positive charges staying on the outside of the cell, um, then you're going to get positive charges to line up out here and negative charges to line up on the inside of the membrane. That's our capacitor there. Um, we actually know that to be the case. Uh, typically, a resting membrane potential is anywhere between negative 40 and negative 80 millivolts. Um, there are exceptions, but that's pretty typical. Um, there is an actual equation that we can use called the Goldman's equation uh, that will tell us exactly what resting membrane potential should be.